First of all, welcome to the second day. Uh, it's a uh, it's a great it's a great pleasure to be here. It's this yesterday was a very interesting day. We had a lot of uh, a few panels, a few presentations. It was a great day. Um, and after we we met on the birth of a feather, of a feather session, I think that that was most the, the, the most uh, uh, for me the most uh, incredible time and. and been able to chat with you, all of you. It was amazing. Um, it, it, it almost felt like we were in, in, in the lobby, in the hotel after the conference, sharing a, a beer or something. <laughs> it almost felt like that, <laughs> almost. Almost. But it, it, it was very good, yeah. almost, yeah. So the idea of this panel, I know that 10 years in technology, it's, it's, a, it's too long shot. But the, the, the idea is to be a little bit, um, is to have a, a something that uh, allowed us to think uh, long and far away. So uh, we all want to see this community uh, for 20 years, 30 years or, or more. And, and, and we know that we have a lot of, of, a, a lot of, of things to share and to, to, to add to the world. And, and, but, but, but we need to start thinking on the long run. Uh, uh, now there is movement on what is the next uh, delivery, how we are going to ship this, this solution. But also, while that happens, also we need to think uh, what we need to do in, in, in five, in three, five, eight, ten years to, to make our, our community sustainable, sustainable, to make our community survive, survive to, to see. Hey, so there you go. There you go. Uh, so what, what do we need to do in, in order to, to make this, this community uh, stay longer and, 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 and be a, a relevant software community in the fintech world and in the finance world? Um, the, 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 open, the, the, the digital and core banking industry, it's an industry of $20 billion per year. And, and, and that, that it's, it's a huge industry. So uh, banks and financial institutions are spending $20 billion per year on new technologies, new developments. And, and I know, and, and I just, for, for my experience and, and the, what I know from the community, we are just getting a tiny, tiny fraction of that revenue uh, as an open source community. So what we need to do to in twenty in ten years uh, be the Linux as the as 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 the as the, um, uh, the, 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 the 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 fintech community. What we need to do in order to our community uh, be relevant and compete with the big vendors uh, of proprietary software and and make everybody use uh, uh, Finera. What we need to do for seeing, I don't know, Chase Manhattan, uh, change the entire, the entire core banking for, for FINRA. So those are the questions that, that I want to address here. And um, I will start uh, by uh, letting you introduce yourself for uh, a couple of minutes. And, and I will start with, with Gabriel. Gabriel, um, so, uh, you, you are from the Finos community, uh, a, 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 a brother or sister open source community. So what we can learn from other communities, how we can collaborate together and, and how we can uh, uh, potentiate together as, as open source communities. First of all, if you can introduce yourself and then answer the question. Absolutely. And Javier, first of all, thanks for having me here and really nice to meet all the other panelists. Um, a quick introduction on me. I think, first of all, I'm really happy to hear um, the questions that you're asking. They're very ambitious, and I think that's the right time to ask ourselves this type of questions. It's certainly questions that I've been asking myself uh, a lot. Uh, uh, maybe not necessarily just specifically about Finerac, but uh, just generally uh, 
going to what I do. I'm the executive director of Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation. Um, we've been spending the last five years to create a really awareness in the financial services industry, which has been historically a big consumer of open source, uh, as much as maybe they sometimes seem to not know or not realize. Um, but really, the last five years have been spent to create the awareness that contribution is actually what ultimately will deliver value to uh, some of these large corporates. And so um, as a foundation, we, we were a 501c6 foundation until about six months ago when we recently joined the Linux Foundation. So we are now the umbrella under the Linux Foundation for uh, pretty much anything related to financial services, and whether that's open source, open standards. We have about 100 projects under the foundation. Um, I have a sweet spot for Apache in my heart, as I am uh, and now emeritus Apache committer. I haven't uh, committed for a while, but certainly that's that's where I started and learned uh, the, the the Apache way and and just the the you know the art of open source. I would say so. Um, you know, I think for me personally and just professionally, we are measured on the growth of open source in financial services. That doesn't mean only Finos. That means how we can collaborate with other adjacent communities like Finaret. And so I'm really happy to, to be having this conversation. Um, without, com you know, without, without clogging the conversation here, I think um, the main, again, the, the, how do we get this collaboration to happen? I think it's always going to be a combination for my experience of, you know, our bottom-up grassroots uh, collaboration across communities, you know, even though I run a foundation, which is of course very largely corporate driven, I think a lot of our success has been due to the fact that we brought the true transparency, meritocratic, uh, you know, through very much the Apache way that I grew in, into a world that, you know, five years ago would look at us with, with very different eyes that it does right now. And so definitely we need to continue fostering the sort of the grassroots collaboration. But I think it's also important uh, if you look at, you know, other communities, say the big data community and Hadoop, you know, the commercial support behind certain of these efforts, again, when is within, again, the right framework of open source, uh, I think it's also important. And that's really what, I, what we've tried to do in Finos for the last five years. I'm sure we'll talk about m more in detail. Uh, so I want to give a chance to the other panelists to chime in. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. So, <clears throat> David, I'm going for you. Um, you know, you, you, you are you're from Israel, one of the most uh, innovative countries and, and the startup nation and all of that and, I hope and, so. and yeah <laughs> and and also you had a, a, a quite a big experience working with the the, 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 the the proprietary core banking and softwares and now you are uh, coming to the open source so what things do we need to see uh, in the community to compete with the the, the big names of the industry like the Timenos, the Infosys, the SAPs, and Mabu. so what things do you do you think that we need to bring to this community to to, to be relevant? Okay. And, and also sure. if you can um, introduce yourself before. Yeah, definitely. So um, as you said, I'm David. Uh, I'm from Israel, uh, from Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm the co-founder of Hypercore um, and Articode. Uh, Articode is a development uh, software company, basically a project company. Um, and we had experience uh, in the last three years working with Finract or two years, um, uh, building projects for, for people. We've collaborated with Vita as well. Um, and uh, recently we've decided to create Hypercore, which is um, a new startup company, um, which is using uh, Finract as its core uh core system so we've actually um decided to to bet everything on Finaract uh being the a good financial core and this is as you've said um part of my 
or, or the, this decision um, was after um, me, myself, I, I was in the past a developer uh, in, in one of the uh, second biggest bank in Israel who were launching a digital, um, a digital uh, financial uh, or a digital bank, basically a new new bank um, a, a under their umbrella. Um, and I've had uh, the, I don't know if it's, if it's the joy or uh, I, I had the opportunity to experience working with, uh, with the biggest uh, vendors. Um, and yeah, basically I was very unimpressed to say the least. Um, as I'm, I'm a software developer for, for the past 12 years, I'm, I'm an open source uh, developer, part of a, of a large JavaScript community, uh, doing like various different things. Um, and it, it was a very concerning to see like what are, <laughs> like how, how those systems look like. Um, and re really after uh, I've uh, basically seen Finneract, Finneract's, um, you know, uh, approach to developing, um, you know, the, the best tool set possible uh, or, or even like the most um, up-to-date approach to developing a financial core um, right from the get-go um, as, as something that is very easy to deploy, um, very easy to use because it has like a very rich um, REST API um, and also like Finrac CN with its microservices approach um, that basically uh, when, it, when it started uh, definitely was uh, the, the very buzzword of, of the future. Um, um, so, so, so yeah, I really like the agenda. I really like the direction that, that Finrac um, has, Finrac community has. And this is why we have decided to, to bet up everything on Finneract and build on top of Finneract. And what I do think is that like we're already offering a better solution than, than the biggest uh, vendors out there. Um, what we are currently lacking is, is, is more like um, uh, embracing of, of those banks. Like this is something that Gabriel has talked about as well. Um, getting uh, the large corporations to to actually engage with with open source, um, and this is something that that I think we are currently lacking. Our approach, Hypercore's approach, is actually going for uh, the non banks first, going for uh, the smallest uh, lenders or or financial um, financial institutions out there that are currently. Uh, it's a very large market. I think it's like thirty percent of the of the of the global um, of the global assets uh, being managed and, and landed over or around the world. Um, so, so it's a very large market as well, and we are starting there. Um, and what we are delivering to those uh, uh, to those corporations are uh, uh, basically automations and rich user experiences, which are, I think, the, the direction to go in, not like get, give uh, the same or, or try to compete directly with, uh, with those large corporations, but, but just like give the best possible solution and, and yeah, provide um, an alternative way that is more open and we are hoping to to contribute as much as we can um, as part of the process as part of like us learning the use cases and yeah that that's very interesting and and, and of course the the the, the non-banks and the small financial institutions are the ones that are taking the risk to be the the, the first movers on, on on the open source so saranj um yeah. the what do you think that 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 we need to 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 do in order to to be relevant in the next ten years? Do we need more features? Do we need to decide if it is Finirac One X or Finirac CN, the the roadmap? 
What, what is your opinion on this? Uh, nice to see you guys out here. Definitely, we would, uh, we all would have to uh, focus on the functionality aspect of Finrac 1.x. I mean, which is kind of like a stable product, um, which most of the, uh, you know, like financial institutions would are using right now, and specifically some banks which I have personally and which our foundation have worked with uh, across the world, they are they are pretty much interested in using. So definitely the feature-wise, we have to kind of like focus on actually like putting a lot of time and effort on 1.x only. CN is not out there, so but CN is yet to uh, grow. Um, we, as, as our, uh, like a couple of our team members are also working on improving uh, Finrac CN. Um, we've already proposed a couple of solutions out there on the list. I mean, thanks to James, I remember we were having a phone uh, session a couple of days ago uh, for bringing us back to, you know, like from the development side to, to, the, to the actual realities. Um, so uh, definitely feature-wise, Finrac 1.x is well, and requires, I think, a couple of more features like for an instance you know i mean as you guys are probably more aware of them what we need to have on top of it um and uh, like talking about cn cn the promise of cn is about the performance and scalability which i i i think the the promises can be delivered through finrec 1.x also at the same time i mean you know like it's not like that it's a big um, you know, kind of a trade-off there happening on CN because when we go to the microservices stuff, it's kind of like pulling uh, back the whole, um, you know, the technical team or the operations teams to actually 1.x because when they realize that there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of going on there um, and why not we just simply use. So it's so our approach should be that we need to make it more simpler. I mean, I remember working back, I mean, in, on Mephos X when it was kind of like, really um i mean i for you guys to for everybody else to know that i actually started working on me for sex when it was you know like uh, like the fifth generation or sixth generation and those times when you know changing apis and those things were like a little bit different as now in apache fin right and that journey from last five years has been tremendously different you know um i've personally like uh, developed uh, uh, like i mean written thousands of lines of code for banks and per, like financial institutions and uh, definitely there is a change, but in the next five years, what I see is that if we focus on a lot of streamlined, effortless development, you know, like for an instance, if somebody wants to kind of like create effortless API, they just should, it doesn't really require them to kind of like write a lot, lots of code, you know, it shouldn't require them to kind of like um, learn um, uh, something new. It should be able to happen, you know, on, on their existing framework. Um, I think another interesting thing which I see is that the, the integration of the language, you know, different kind of languages. Uh, definitely that's happening through uh, REST APIs and we don't really need to uh, sort of like focus on it. So one of our talk is actually about, uh, the presentation is about introducing encryption from uh, from a different point of view in 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 FINRAC. Like, so right now security of data privacy is not a part of FINRAC. So this is something which I would personally like to see. I'm a big proponent of data privacy. I work with Bitcoin and stuff. So, um, I mean, I, I put my time there. So I kind of understand how financial institutions are sort of like putting their uh, pedal on data privacy these days. So this mm -hmm. is where I personally mm -hmm. see in the next five years, definitely there's a bunch of other things which we all can kind of like, you know, imagine. And future is like endless. I mean, it's not limited to the sky. I mean, you know, and we all are sitting in different world and we have experiences of those worlds. And when we merge them, we have Finrec, you know? So this is how it is. Exactly. I see in the next couple exactly. of years. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Saran. So, um, James, the, it, it's been a, 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 a long road since 2002 when you first created the, the white paper. And, and, and so, what do you think is going to the next 20 years? So for you, I'm proposing an even longer shot. So what, for you, what is, how is going to look the next 20 years? How is going to, how would you imagine the next uh, generation of this software and this community? 
We can't hear you. I think we have to, uh, as we did back then, try to surf the trend we see coming. Um, and the big trends that we that we saw coming was, you know, it was a it went from client server architectures to cloud ar to cloud architecture. We could see that starting to evolve. We had we had terrific advisors telling us, "Oh, that's definitely going to be there." Um, and so we designed for that. And we saw the API movement really take off. And so we designed for that. And so what are the trends that we really are, need to track now? And I, and I would propose there are a few of them. One is, you, you know, even more ubiquitous connectivity um, is going to drive um, a lot more um, applications available to more and more people. There are still many places in the world. I mean, I know it's not our reality, but there's still many places in the world where it's hard to get a data signal and many people do not have smart devices. And so, you, you know, not everybody's going to have a smartphone and they, and so, but they might have data. And so what does that data talk to? And so then we have to think about what are those interfaces that we're going to have? So those are some of the big trends we have to look at. Connectivity being one of them, where are the devices heading? Uh, and then the other thing is is the business models. And I, you know, yesterday I talked about the platforms, the big financial platforms, where they do payments and accounts just as a necessity, uh, a building block, not a profit center, not a not something that they're trying to make money on, but an underlying thing. And so that is something that is shifting. You know, there are tens of thousands of banks globally right now, and 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 all if you count all the small credit unions, I mean. There's many, many um, of these small institutions, but what role do they play when you have, you know, an account on your device and the ability to send payments to anybody? And you can do that through one of these major platforms um, and you're doing, you know, and, and so these are the trends we have to look at to inform our strategies for where we're going. Um, so as I look out, I mean, I think one thing, one key value we need to have is reaching out to other projects and having a relationship with, you know, for example, I think identity is a really fundamental building block for financial inclusion and financial access. There's still plenty of people um, in the world, even in the United States, that don't have a bank account. There are banked and unbanked and underbanked populations. So we have to build those connections to other projects like identity. We shouldn't build identity ourselves. We should reach out to other projects for that. Um, there's AI and machine learning and insights that we can gain um, and, and functionality that can be added to Finarac. Um, and those things can be added by reaching out to those projects, those open source projects to bring in, you know, the federated type of, um, of, of machine learning algorithmic um, computation that that could really build um, a whole set of of new kinds of disruptor banks and fintechs, right? And uh, and so those are two things. And then I guess the, the the third thing is continue to innovate with the the banking industry and help them see the value of having Finarac sit on top of their existing stuff. I mean, so much of the world uh, of banking is is layers upon layers of systems, right? I mean, one of the problems back in, the, if I can bring in some ancient history, one of the problems that I worked on a long time ago was the Y2K issue. And the reason why it was so difficult mm -hmm. is that you had COBOL programming that had been written in the 60s and 70s that was still there. It was underlying these banking systems. So banking systems have there. a lot of layers of stuff. <laughs> and these things uh, may not be clean, but we have to recognize that they are that they are there, and so how can banks really um, innovate? Well, they can they can bring in Finarac, and Finarac can be their channel, can be their their way that they become more relevant and innovative um, in today's world. And in fact, we're already seeing this. And and I you know from where I sit, I I know which global banks are looking at this, um, and which banks are already starting to play around with this. If we could get them to join us openly, they're kind of doing it in a, I think, a kind of furtive way. We need to, you know, get Finos and Gabrielle to tell us how are we going to get those big banks to to say, yeah, oh yeah, we're using open source. Yep, we are. 
um, that would be a major shift. And that would bring in the kinds of financing and the kinds of effort um, and concentration of, of, of coding that would really drive this forward. So um, that's a long list already. <laughs> I'll stop there and let's have yeah. a discussion. Well, but surfing, surfing the the trends, it's something that it it, it sounds like a, it sounds like a huge uh, uh, challenge. And 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 how how you do how do you recommend Gabriel came from 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 the 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 the, the, the financial sector and the and the corporations and the big banks uh, that are openly using open source? How, how do we do we uh, should we like propose the road or should we listen to them? What, what do you recommend us? I, I thought that James' observations were, were absolutely spot on. I feel like we are invited in so many areas here. Uh, I, I think one area that you guys mentioned that I think it's, it's really important is, you're right, challenger banks and smaller banks and fintechs are typically A, under, you know, I would say, more competitive, uh, you know, drives to innovate faster than maybe the larger banks who have, you know, a lot of legacy, as as James hinted to. And, you know, I am a big believer that, um, you know, finance, like many other ecosystems, should be an open ecosystem. It is largely... Um, you know, the value is in the network, is not necessarily in the code itself. And so that's actually a pleasure and a pain because, you know, on the flip side, when you have a massive established network, then it makes it the much harder to, you know, switch to a new software because, again, you get it there. It's a cash cow. It, it keeps moving. It keeps sort of running your business. So I think the first point is absolutely uh, looking to start from the smaller players who also potentially don't have massive development teams like in you know the large corporations. You know, when you have to make a choice between make or buy, and you don't have, I don't know, 60,000 developers like my JP Morgan board member, which again, when I hear that number, I'm like, what do you guys do with 60,000? I wish I had, you know, what could we build with 60,000 developers in, a, you know, in an open source setting? If I could, only could have access to, you know, 0.1% of those 600 people, we'll be off to the races. Uh, but so I think <laughs> one, one angle is certainly starting from the smaller ones because, again, as James was saying, one of the other trends that I'm seeing is, look, one way or another, both the small and the big, uh, firms are becoming technology companies. They want to be technology companies. They are realized they are all moving to cloud. And so actually the context that they're moving in uh, also as it belongs to say competing with, you know, I'm here in the West Coast with the big tech, um, they are, you know, there are systemic drivers for them to innovate faster. And that's certainly part of why we've seen in Finos them starting to contribute. Um, so I think, again, just recapping, starting from the smaller ones, uh, I think Finos has played a key role in creating awareness that is not just about consumption. I think contribution is fundamental and we're nowhere nearly there. I mean, this year we have seen probably 70, 80% of our contribution being net new projects contributed by banks. That's great. You know, there's a lot of technology in there. Of course, as James saying, not every piece of technology is going to be super useful out there in the open. But, you know, it yeah. does open the channel for them to understand that there is, you know, that the value chain uh, doesn't stop at consuming. And if you actually consume and have to maintain your own copy, you know what? Probably better if you go proprietary because the cost of maintaining your own copy of the code and, you know, keeping on pulling from upstream and you know it's just it just becomes almost defeats the purpose of open source i think one last angle that we are trying this year and i would love to hear your your thoughts uh, on this is is the angle of engaging with regulators um i mean we have seen a lot of open banking uh, sort of taking place sometimes mandated by regulators but sometimes we're now seeing you know Again, there was a mention of APIs. Many of this firm are realizing they're actually providing API access for pay, you know, not for free, 
it actually is a great way to generate incremental revenue and you know kind of moving towards more of this sort of open ecosystem again there are drivers that will of course uh, uh, suggest that they want to keep their network for themselves uh, but we are seeing sort of glimpse of changes there and so what we started to do this year is you know engaging with regulators we now have a special interest group that we're starting trying to bring in financial institutions reg tech companies and regulators in the fold because i gotta say when i uh, i participated to a couple of conference with regulators and there's a lot of desire to do the right thing when it comes to financial inclusion when it comes to data privacy um it's just really really complex problems at the crossroads of you know technology and policy and those two aspects again i feel like there's a lot of desire to do good but there's not a clear way to get there and what we're trying to position that is is actually open source especially foundations like us we play at the crossroads of technology and policy because you know it, the 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 right the right. Yeah, yeah. the community is as important as governing it, meritocracy, you know, running a, a, a say a blockchain network in a yeah. you know yeah. proper way. So we're trying to see if there is kind of a again going back to the top down and bottom up approach, we're yeah. trying to see if we can nurture them both. I don't know what you guys think about it. Yeah, no, I mean I look, I, I talk to regulators and development banks on an almost weekly basis. And yeah. What I can, I completely agree that there is a willingness to engage the fintech community. There's a willingness to talk about what policy changes are necessary to encourage innovation, to protect the public, um, to build you know more publicly oriented infrastructure. There is there is a lot of uh, you know a lot of the folks get into that those worlds for the public benefit, right? So they're trying to do things that align with the public benefit. And I, and I agree, it is complex. So, you know, you um, I, I think one of the issues is that as fintechs try to approach the regulator one at a time, they just have their own sort of, um, you know, commercial interest in it. When fintechs as, a, as an association or as a foundation like Thenos, when they approach regulators, they're speaking on behalf of a community of innovation which the regulator can then talk to because there's a, there's a really useful interface there that says, look, it's not just about one commercial interest, it's about a public good that we're trying to create collectively. So I, I think that's important. And I, I, I also would say that, um, you know, the, the regulations um, permit quite a lot. And there are some times when I think the, the FinTechs get caught up on, well, I wanna do it my way, and you know there there has to be i think some flexibility in saying well why don't we come up with this commercial deal or that commercial deal um yeah. in order to get to market so um it, it is the environment in which you operate and um i think that fintechs often come to this with well i've got this great idea the technology is awesome why don't you let me do it yeah rather than coming to it with okay i have this cool idea who can i work with that's going to allow me to get to market. And yeah. I think that's a switch in mentality that has to happen as well. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, the I, I'm going to let the other panelists chime in, but I just want to say, yes. you know, they say that adding, right a level, adding a level of indirection solves half of the problems of, of computer science. Now, so actually we are noticing that, yeah. that it's much easier yeah. for us to work with regulators than directly, even financial institutions. And one final comment is, and maybe for 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 later conversations but what i've seen is that also the fintechs to your point you know you you say banks are not familiar with open source but i gotta say i've had many examples of fintechs that you would expect them to be you know innovative the new kids on the block sort of understanding how a commercial open source model would work i've seen a very similar lack of understanding of how a fintech can actually make an open core play, um, you know, 
their business model. So I, I don't know if there's an education there on that side as well. You know, maybe some of them are just ex bankers <laughs> with a hoodie. Uh, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's, certainly, it's certainly been an aspect that I, I, I would have expected more maturity in the fintech communities when it comes to open source. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, th I think a lot of uh, what you're referring to is um, also acting in, in, in the current world. So like, for example, if, you, if we're looking at fintechs that are in the payment um, segment, in payment segment, um, there is not a lot of ways to do liquidation that doesn't involve um, SWIFT, for example. So like, <laughs> in, 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 and I think you, you are you're making a very valid point where, where you're saying, um, James, actually, you, you, you were saying that um, the foundations actually uh, play a really big role um, in trying to um, connect all of those different organizations. I do think that like in the future, part of the, part of the expectations um, from, from those foundations and from the organizations that are actually um, governing open source uh, project um, would be to to connect with the different uh, organizations and and I, I've actually had very good experience with that with Mifos Mifos uh, Ed actually has, has introduced me to to Javier I think or or even maybe it was Mirel before uh, um, even before that um, but yeah I, I do think that there are um, that's Things like that, things like um, um, trying to find um, alternative liquidity uh, uh, systems or, 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 or trying to create uh, networks, payment networks, or even, you know, uh, we, we are talking about like bureaus of uh, like credit bureaus or, or open credit bureaus, like things like that are um, should definitely be something that the community organizes for its own benefits basically so so my way of thinking of this whole thing is like um an open source community should not only um, create um code that is um later deployed however you would like but also create services um that are that the community can um, consume so so we've actually done something on that regard um, with Finneract as a service, just like um, providing that to, to back to the community. Everyone can just like go in and, and it, like uh, fire up their own instance. Um, but the goal there was to, to basically try to learn how, how to provide such a service to the community um, and maybe even um, take that much further. So, so I'm thinking about like, um, doing provisioning of 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 and orchestrations of those uh of of the different organizations so that we could all um learn from that or even have like a even like get a, a good sandbox environment basically um for 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 testing various things um yeah and i think like mifos has, has been delving into into module loop which is very uh, a very important project as well like, I, I would love to hear like what do you think um finract uh, community in general could do to maybe introduce module loop as, as, a, as a service um for yeah. The different... yeah yeah so let me put on my mifos hat for a bit um just to yeah. give a quick synopsis of that there's a whole talk about that later on but essentially yeah. module loop is an open source switch that the bill and melinda gates foundation funded, it's now an independent foundation funded by Google and the Gates Foundation and Omidyar um, Network and others. And so it's the payment switch, it's the connective tissue. Um, Finerac is the account system and the banking system. And then Mifos has built a, a, a payments hub in between. That's also open source and you can get all of that. Um, and so by putting all of those together, I agree, David, we, we could, we, and we plan to see that as kind of a provisioned um, set of tools for um, a, a government to see how this could work or multiple banks, or you could see how that could connect to your existing banking system. 
So we do have, you know, we have broad plans for that. And I think that's part of our building block for the future. So payments, I think, are super important. And, I, and I'm sorry if I am taking too much time, but payments are really a driver, right? We started with microfinance yeah. as like um, an intervention with people in villages meeting an unmet need of credit and savings. But payments drive so much of day-to-day -day life. And if so, if you can drive payments onto Finarac and these open source payment systems, um, and the way you do that is by having, again, these trends around QR codes and, and the innovative things around payment initiation and the Europeans with the uh, PSD2 and you know these things I talked about yesterday, these things are driving payments innovation. I mean, this is the most innovative time in the payments industry in the last 30 years, for <laughs> sure. And it's a massive mm -hmm. change. And so being a part of that means building that complete stack. And so we're, we're working on that. And I, I think that that's one of my points around connecting to other projects. Like Finarac does not have to do everything. Finarac can stay really focused yeah. on getting the core banking systems right, getting security, I agree with Saranj, security and data privacy embedded into the, the, the logic. And then these other systems, these other open source projects can have their own energy, their own set of users. And th this componentization of this really, I think, helps. Um, and, you know, again, payments yeah. are driving a lot of innovation. And I, I guess I would, I would also like to plug one more payments innovation, and that is, the, the biometric cards and the and the sort of the online offline things that are coming along. And I I guess I'm, I'm really just attracted to this idea because I, I like the idea of people being in charge of their own um, their own financial account um, and, and having it widespread. So um, anyway, I'll stop on on that. I think that there's quite a lot yeah. to, to, to digest. So I would like to add the future things. of the community. Yes, go ahead, Sirish. So I would like to go in, on the same thoughts of what James has said. The payment is the most important thing. I remember working with this US bank uh, a couple of months ago while we were integrating uh, the platform with Finneract. And, you know, the regulation was something, a big hurdle. We had to kind of like uh, twist our way around. And this is where things go a little bit, you know, here and there, when, when you come from the payments, you know, in rails, it's kind of like becoming complicated, actually. So I think we kind of have to accept the fact that we have to uh, sort of prototype it next couple of years or focus on how do we efficiently um, put this up with payment rails, like together, like cohesive, you know, so, so that it's not an external part anymore. But rest assured, Finract works really amazing. Um, we've seen it working with from zero to you know thousands of transactions. So it's a, it's a, the best open source core banking system out there right now. I mean, there is none actually. I remember when I when I kind of like went on a Google looking for open source core banking stuff. So like other two projects which don't even exist now anymore. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so payments and regulation is definitely something which we also as a team, you know, look for out. And uh, we devise different ways to kind of like form a date with different kind of regulations. So imagine like, you know, you have a bunch of, uh, as David's, David said, that instances firing up instances. So you could fire up an instance like in Philippines and you have these regulations and payment trails, you know, baked inside together. And anybody who wants to use those API directly could use those APIs, you know? So such kind of uh, future I envision. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. You're welcome. So um, we have time. Uh, the next session is in 30 minutes. So we can, I, I, I don't want to stop this panel. I, I don't know if you have time. I, I am enjoying it really, really much. So we can go. Um, so I, I want to, Throw a question to the to the to the groups. In terms of 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 being relevant, one of the most important things, and, and I saw on one of the keynotes before, is it's having a mission. You know, a, a a conveying mission to attract people, and 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 of course, uh, generating a, a, a big business is it's not a, a, a conveying vision to bring volunteers. So. 
and, and, and solving the poverty, it's, 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 it's one of the biggest mission and it's Mifos's mission. But what about FINRA? What, what is the FINRA mission? Uh, can we borrow Mifos's mission? We need to have another mission? What, what we need to have for the next 10 years to, to, to convey and attract talent and collaborators? Um, uh, you know, I guess that's that's a very ripe question, Javier. I I, I like uh, I like where you're going. Um, yeah, I mean, Infinerax mission does not need to be Mifos's mission, and you know, Mifos contributed the code with the intention of Infinerax being a broader based set of players, right? So, Mifos remains committed to financial inclusion, open source, um, you know, poverty reduction. Infinerax. Um, is really about the financial sector. And um, so there's there's plenty of room for for that to evolve as a mission. And I I did try um, on a blog post on the Finerac uh, wiki to articulate a, a vision and a mission. What I would love is if there are others with similar kinds of ideas or different visions to post there. And to have a, a rich discussion about what should be that that vision, but I guess where I, what I would say is that the vision is commoditization of financial systems, such that more and more um, value can be uh, retained by the end user. So banking is extractive. Can we make it less extractive by bringing the commoditization of the back end to bear? And so, if we can do that, if we can build, because commoditization is the thing that open source does really well. It it makes things because you're getting all these different people collaborating on the commons. It builds the commons, and so that drives commoditization, which drives down the cost, and it and it provides a price signal. Like, really. I'm going to spend $5 million on this banking system and I can download it over here for free. I mean, again, open source is not about free, so I don't want to confuse people, but it is one of those values that I think that we can talk about is open source. It drives commoditization and combined with cloud technology, it really, and, and this is why Articode is, you know, your provisioning ideas and how you've done that are so important. Um, and so that, you know, I think that's the, that's the, the vision or the mission right now. Um, but I, mm -hmm. I would love to have more people get involved in that. Discussion. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I do think that Finerac, um, as you've said, has its own, uh, motto. Um, and, and I do appreciate that the fact that Bifos has, um, contributed that to, to Apache by like seeing that the Apache Foundation with its track record um, could actually create the commoditization um, or, or bring Finract to be a commodity. Um, and what I would like to, to, to suggest is actually, um, uh, is, is actually pushing that forward for, um, we want, uh, Finneract to be uh, basically the core that you don't need, or or the core that uh, that that you don't need to to invest too much in, um, in order to start building. Um, and in that sense, it's not just um, having that uh, a copy of the of the code to be to be able for you to to run on your own, but then um, having that um, available for you when you need it um, as a service, or uh, I, I would go even further for for like a serverless um, approach where where you, this would only run um, when you need it, uh, just in time, basically. Um, and I, I don't have like the <laughs> the right way to to to, to, okay. to to yeah. articulate for, for a vision, but but this is what I would like to be the the core values, basically. What, what do you think, Gabriel? It, it's a it's a 
a vision or mission that that the global source community has to have. That's, I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot from this conversation. So first of all, thank you for, for involving me. But um, I told you that was one of the reasons why, why I was here, to learn a lot. So I <laughs> hope this is actually just you the too. beginning of the conversation um, across the different communities, because you're absolutely right. I mean, we are starting conversations with Mojolup. We've had conversations with, with Mifos. Of course, we, you know, we can represent um, several people, and I think, I mean, the point of, you know, it, it kind of got me thinking on uh, the differences between Apache and a more vertical foundation. Again, I'm a big fan of Apache. This is not about, about competing in any way. It's actually about bringing people together, but I can now see much more clearly how, you know, an horizontal foundation like Apache, and, and again, kind of going back to the grassroots, you know, very uh, uh, focused sort of, um, putting forward the values of open source and, and how you're supposed to do open source actually could be very complementary to a much more vertical foundation like us, where we can be stewards of, you know, much more financial services specific conversations around, you know, with the regulators, with, with the big banks and, and so on and so forth. But back, back to your question, I think to me, it's a combination of, in, in my mind, open source and one thing that, actually really helped me in my pitches to, to banks over the last five years is that what we're trying to do here is not a zero-sum game. It is a positive-sum game, meaning, yes, there is the aspect of cost reduction and open source commoditizes, you know, something that candidly, I think we, we all think it's non-differentiating. Um, you know, I, I would argue that 60, 70% of the software, if not 80, 90% of the software that run into a large financial institution, it's non-differentiating. All of them have the same, regulatory implementation being one example of that. Um, but, you know, I think the other angle is exactly what, uh, I think, I don't know who was mentioning it at this point, I'm kind of lost, but, um, it's the value for the end users. Uh, I think we gotta combine those two drivers. Yes, of course, the way you get a big financial institution, even a smaller one at the table is, yeah, let's start with, with uh, uh, you know, cost reduction and open source allows you, you know, tactical gain, come and use the software. Hopefully that will trigger you contributing back because as we were saying before, it's gonna cost you more to maintain it your own. But on the flip side, I think when it comes to strategic level at these firms, you know, I, I have the honor to talk with CTOs and CIOs of these large banks. What actually they're going for is a better user experience. That's what they're trying, or they're feeling in a way somewhat threatened by, by the FinTechs and again, I don't necessarily like to use fear as a factor uh, 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 to to move things along, but certainly fear is a big is a big driver for people to move and act. And so, I guess what I'm trying to say here, there is a combination of that your typical open source benefits that I think we are all aware of in terms of cost reduction, talent acquisition. You know, some of these banks are really looking at that strategically, but I think ultimately, what is going to drive them? to actually make the loop, the leap. And, and I don't know how this directly correlates to the vision that FINRAC, FINRAC should have, but I think what is actually gonna ultimately drive them to, to uh, uh, make the leap is, you know, they're able to offer a superior or comparable user experience to what we're seeing many of these new fintechs coming up are, are able to offer the mobile native generation. Again, I go back to the trends that, that James has so, so well uh, elaborated on. So I, again, I might not have a super clear answer to your question around vision and mission, but I think as we work together as adjacent communities, Finarat, Finos, Mojolup, uh, um, Mifos, uh, and many others that are trying to do something around this area. I think maybe the best way is looking at the big picture together and then divide and conquer. Where can yeah. you guys, you know, what's your bread and butter? What's our bread and butter? How can we coordinatedly, you know, work to, I think get to a vision that is, is very much shared the more, the more I talk to you guys. So um, 
sorry if that wasn't necessarily exactly the answer. I, I, I didn't come up with a, a vision and mission statement for FINRA for the last ten for the next ten years, but I hope <laughs> we can continue the conversation. And you know, we're still learning ourselves. Uh, 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 we are now in a very different phase where we were three years ago. Banks are contributing. We're looking at sort of core business problems in the industry. Payments keep coming up. Um, you know, we are historically more on the investment banking side, but we're looking very much to, you know, apply our successes and our lessons learned to retail. So I hope this, you know, together we can figure out what the best vision, uh, what's the best mission for us to get to the common vision is. Does that make sense? It, it Yeah, well, it yeah. makes sense to me. Um, I, I, I think I also would like to plug um, just how amazing the community is already. And so I think if we think about the vision for Fenerac into the future, we want to build on that. We already have, I think, one of the most global, um, dispersed, uh, varied community anywhere on Apache. I mean, we have high school students to senior developers. We have people with skills up and down um, the ladder. We and And from all over the world, from many different um, countries with with very different um, life experiences, and I, I think that we are just simply richer um, as a result of that. So I, I think that's a vision as Absolutely. well that we want to encourage and maintain. Our diversity, it's awesome. We have. I, I don't. I don't know about the other projects, but I do know about fit. Sorry, fitness, I'll say, but <laughs> because we have also diversity, but in our diversity as a company, it's, it's mainly because of the diversity of the funeral community, because we we got most of our our team members from from the community. So mm -hmm. if it's if 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 our if my company it's a sample of the community, I, I would say that we have an incredible diverse community. Incredible diverse. And that is it's 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 a it's a it's powerful. It's very powerful. One of the things that I'm I'm going back to your first comment, James, on 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 surfing trends and 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 figuring out while we walk, and it's something that I am very uh, very interested in. And and I'm I'm not seeing a lot of this in the in, in the Finnair community. It's about blockchain. So wh what about blockchain? How we can it, it because it, if it's going to be the, the the next thing or it is the next thing, banking it's it's you know banks are a very expensive database you know because physical money it's no longer it's no longer uh, uh, relevant at least in a, in a, in a, in a, the big maybe in the financial inclusion it is but. Physical money, it's just a tiny percentage of all the transactions in the world. And, 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 and banks are basically, for me, a very expensive database. And, and now we have a better database, which is blockchain. So what we need to do in the FINRA community, or if any, anything we need to do to, to, to serve this new trend, what do you think? Nobody wants to. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, I was waiting for somebody else to jump in, but you know, I'll go <laughs> ahead. Um, so look, um, distributed transaction ledgers are um, are useful when you have certain use cases, and I I think we get a little too um, attracted by the shining object, the shiny object. Um, you know, Byzantium fault tolerance is wonderful, but why do you need it? Um, and so if you have trusted domains and you have trust, if you have trust kinds of frameworks that exist and they work, then why do you need, why do you really need this? And in many cases, I think it is a technology in search of a, of a product or a market, right? Now, that is not to yeah. say that we shouldn't, you know, encourage adoption and, and and figure things out. I mean, I'm I'm all for let's let's explore, right? I think the way Mojaloop has attracted uh, or, or dealt with this is they've built into Mojaloop is the payments thing. It they've built in um, a connection to uh, a, D, a DTL um, 
And um, they've done that by having a, an interledger tokenization for every transaction. So they can talk to a standard ledger or they can talk to a, uh, a blockchain ledger. And so I think in the same way, if we could bring that sort of pattern into Fenerac, if we could, you know, perhaps somebody could take this and work on this as a project, is build the underlying ledger that we have using um, that to see if we get performance, see if we can get better performance out of it. I mean, we, we could start with, for example, the, the Ripple BRD or, you know, one of these existing wallet types and see if we could we could build some of the functionality on top of it. I, I'm not convinced that's going to get us much. I mean, if you don't need it um, to get good, you know, I'm just not sure. But I but I think we should somebody if somebody wants to do it. That's the wonderful thing about an open source project. Propose the idea, bring it on list, start working on it, get people bought into your vision and let's see if it, it gets accepted. Maybe it's like a separate repo. Maybe it's something that gets in, instantiated at runtime. Um, I don't know. Somebody who's got the skills could do this. I, you know, uh, yeah. I would love to see, you know, people discuss this, but I, but I think again, um, as somebody has told me, um, what was the quote? It's, um, if you, if you don't have trust issues, then, um, then blockchain's just a, uh, just a database, just poorly designed database. Um, yeah. and um, <laughs> I think I'm getting the, I'm getting the quote wrong. So, um, but anyway, uh, that's, that's where I stand on it. I, I'm happy to entertain discussion. I love the idea. Yeah, that, that's actually something that I, I was, I really wanted to add is, is that like there are conditions where there is no trust. Um, so I can see the use case um, or, or that be like the, the use case where you don't have trust, which is maybe um, between uh, different uh, countries, um, maybe like so, so, like maybe following the Ripple idea, where yeah, uh, or the XRP, um, where if you want to do global payments, um, do it on 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 the Ripple account. But that, but on there, it's more it's more centralized and decentralized, um, really. So, um, what I would suggest is that. Um, places where you don't have trust um, could definitely utilize this technology. And and thinking of like what you've uh, what you've said, James, uh, as, as part of, of the agenda of of uh, Mifos, maybe it's something that you should consider. Like uh, there are places where where there are trust issues. Um, is something like that. Could be a good like a fitting um, use case, or is that too far fetched or too like stretching that this this idea of, of, of you know a distributed database? Well, I, I mean, again, I think we could we could also combine these technologies. I mean, for example, you could have yeah. wallets that are based on or identities based on um, blockchain, um, and you yeah. those that could provide an input into the system you know that, that that gets you into that space without having to to change the back end um i'm just not sure that the back end needs to be you know a dlt um maybe the front end wallet maybe there's like a maybe there's like a thing that sits on a on a phone or um you know on a card um and you know th then then we're getting into and and identity again ident identity i think is a good one for for potentially for, for this. I mean, who knows? Uh, again, it has to do with the trust networks. There's already plenty of yeah. um, trust networks out there that work, right? So the internet is a trust network. Yeah. We're, we're, we're yeah. here because the DNS servers trust certain certificates and you know we, we understand that. So um, anyway, I, uh, I actually just noticed that my battery is running low. I've only got another five Yes, and we are, we are for way over far time. away from the time. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm really wanna, enjoying this conversation. I just Go want ahead, to Gabriel. comment on that. Um, first of all, I cannot say the B word. I have to say DLT because in my world, blockchain is still a no-no word. No, kidding, kidding aside, <laughs> kidding aside. Um, 
I think the 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 you know the point on trust is very spot on, and I'm not entirely sure. As much as I think it should be a building block of creating trust, you know, technology can help create trust. But for what I've experienced, you know, trust is something that sort of ex exudes. I don't know how to say that, but that it's uh, beyond just technology. Meaning, it took us five years to build some degree of trust between these institutions. That a it was trust towards us. Again, it's a small, much smaller pro problem, quote unquote. But it's like they trusted us. They, they entrusted us with their code. And most importantly, they they trusted each other that, you know, sure, everyone contributes for, especially if you're a corporate, everyone contributes to drive their own technology interest. But again, it's a positive sum game. You're yeah. helping the community while helping yourself. That 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 is the, the fundamental point. And so I've seen so many of these blockchain projects failing to go to production, often because of the lack of a an actual overlaying trust framework on the technology. Uh, do the companies trust each other? Is there a governance network? You know, because as a fun, you know, as, as the idea of a foundation, of course, we do a lot of governance and and you know and and policies, but it's around code contributions. It's not around how you run and operate. Uh, a trust network. So, again, I, 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 my only caveat is I think the technology is, is very interesting. I think, you know, uh, providing, I think, that idea of, of a, a switch sort of, or, or a transparent layer of compatibility with the old, le you know, traditional ledgers and distributed ledgers is a great idea. But I fear that you we would need some other sort of trust construct to be able to actually bring these pieces of technology from behind the scenes pilots across three or four organizations that never really make it out there uh, to actually, you know, uh, a network that we all trust, like again, akin to the internet. So just, just a comment there that I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know that technology can change people. People change people typically. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about trust, trust is is a thing that you gain gram per gram, but you lost kilo per kilo. You know? Right away, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, thank you, David, Gabriel, James, Serange. I You lost connection, but thank you for for this wonderful conversation. I really, really enjoyed. I hope that the, the audience already enjoyed too. This is going to be in the in YouTube on the Apache Con channel too. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, let's continue this conversation in the Bears of a Feather later today. I I welcome you there. Thank you. Thank you All very right. much. Thank you thank very you much. Nice to meet you, everyone.